Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the history of the sousaphone in jazz music. Um, so to do that, we're going to start out by talking about the origins of the sousaphone itself. The first version of the sousaphone came out actually in the 1860s and it was called a helicon. Uh, this is not what we picture as a sousaphone today. Um, and you'll actually see there's a couple generations that don't look quite what we think they should. But these, uh, these went around the body per usual, but the bell kind of just ended. Um, it didn't really go any way, it just was a continuation of where the uh, body was naturally curving anyways. Um, it wasn't until 1893 uh, with John Philip Sousa where he saw, he didn't like helicons and he saw a different way of doing it. So he asked James, James Welsh Pepper to create a new kind of sousaphone. Um, this is still not quite what we know of as today. It's a little bit more similar to where it has like an actual bell, but the bell is actually pointed upwards like a concert uh, tuba. And um, these were called rain catcher sousaphones because when it rained, it would go straight down the bell. Um, these were not super popular beyond John Philip Sousa's band, and it wasn't until the 1920s when college marching bands wanted to use sousaphones that we have the bell front sousaphone we know of today. Um, so, uh, sousaphone in jazz. Uh, in the beginning uh, of sousaphones being in jazz, they were part of the rhythm section where they would play uh, mostly oompa parts. Um, and uh, they, uh, they played with these legendary stars, but they really never got to go beyond, you know, bum, 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 um, classic March John Philip Sousa stuff. Uh, and by the 1930s, the sousaphone was almost completely removed from the jazz band setting and was uh, replaced by the upright bass. Um, it wasn't until 1964 that the famous band leader, Claude Thornville, uh, asked some uh, arrangements from a famous jazz arranger, Gil Evans. Um, Gil did write, uh, and write and arrange some pieces uh, for Claude's tour, uh, but he did include a sousaphone part in it. And instead of the sousaphone being a part of the rhythm section with figured bass symbols um, and playing oompas, it was actually a part of uh, a low bottom harmony and helped uh, accent what was going on in the piano's left hand a lot. Um, so the sousaphone was no longer a part of the rhythm section. Uh, the upright bass still kept the walking bass line things going. Um, if we move to how the sousaphone evolves from there, eventually the sousaphone could become a solo instrument, which uh, had never been heard of before in a jazz, uh, in a jazz band. Um, this is thanks to a New York teenager named uh, Ray Drapper, who, when he was 16 years old in 1957, recorded uh, his own album called Tuba Sounds with an alto saxophone. A year after that, uh, he started touring with Max Roach, who is a uh, jazz percussionist, um, and his band. And uh, he toured with them for quite a while and really changed what everyone thought of uh, the sousaphone could do. Um, he played a pivotal role in showing that not only can the sousaphone be a part of the ensemble, but it can also be a part of uh, of of the solo instruments that are presented, um, which was really cool, really cool. Uh, so how the sousaphone is now used in uh, today's jazz world, uh, you know, jazz has evolved drastically. Now ensembles have access to microphones and amplification that uh, was a lot harder to get your hands on uh, before. Um, you know, everything's trying to be carried in a smaller package now too. Uh, so the biggest thing that's changed with, uh, with the sousaphone is how it's timbre uh, is kind of presented in the ensemble. What I mean by this is that a microphone is now stuck deep within the bell of the horn, um, and this creates more of an electric sound, almost like an electric bass sound. Um, and, you know, some people like this, some people don't. Uh, the, the people that do like it, the reason that they do is, the, is because now that person, that performer, has complete control of this electric bass sound, which an electric bass player really doesn't. There's no turning of knobs, but you can crescendo and decrescendo on a wind instrument, but you can't do on other ones, um, other string instruments like that. Uh, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, right here, I've just listed a couple of uh, different examples of musical things to listen to that include the sousaphone. The top two 
don't really include this new microphone thing that I've discussed in the last one. This bottom one definitely does. Uh, they're all a really great listen, you know, they're, they're really cool arrows of the jazz music. Right here are just the uh, sources I use to get some of my information, especially on the jazz history part of it. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new today. Thank you.